Will there anything be hurting us? We, I, it could be anything. This is war. This is not peace with friends. Today I am joined by my friend Brant Kreider. Brant is the president of a fashion house called Yves Saint Laurent, North America. And he has spent a large amount of his life in the fashion industry, working for the Prada Group before his current role. Along with fashion, Brant is a distinguished DJ who has played major parties and events all over the world. He and his wife Mary have four children, Ellie, Baylor, Hudson, and Beckett. And they need to keep having kids because their kids are beautiful. Like they're literally models who travel around the world modeling beautiful. Brant's one of the most passionate people I know and is a joy to spend time with. And I'm so thankful he joins us today. A lot of pressure, this really <sighs> nerves, nerves. So this is war with friends. This is the war and you are my friend. Let's Thanks go. for being on the show, Brant. Bro, it's, it's, yeah. it's an honor. That's amazing. All right, so in a minute we'll play war and we'll talk life, leadership, blah, blah, blah. But first, I want to get to know a little bit. And so what we've done is we've taken a deep dive on your uh, socials, which we had to go pretty deep because, and I want to get to this in a little bit as to why there's not current stuff on there, but yep. uh, we just need some additional context for some of these, uh, these photos. So let's, uh, let's find out about what's going on here. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's Beckett preparing for Halloween. Okay, very good. Uh, it's Halo, right? Yes, yeah, Halo yeah. and Beckett preparing that's for Halloween. Very and nice. That's a really good shot, right? This is a good-looking bedroom, too, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's super cute. Uh, Custom-made surfboard there. Yeah. Uh-huh. But that's Beck for Halloween. I like it. So All right. cute. Oh, that's me and Ellie making cookies. That's your now 16 My daughter. My daughter's now 16. That's us making cookies at Hershey Park. Uh, that's so cute. Yeah. I like that. This is tweet says, I ordered a new iPhone yesterday and actually ordered two by mistake. That, I think I was hacked. Oh, okay. So yeah. you didn't tweet that? No, I didn't. So I, this I, is like a Trump thing. No, you didn't that tweet was, that? No, no, I did not Other tweet Hillary that. Thing? I certainly didn't tweet it at 5 a.m. That's a, that's a hack. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's a hack. Uh, this one says, do I need an iPad? It's 2010. Who's tweeting all your tweets? <laughs> that's a hack. <laughs> okay. Hacked. <laughs> this says... Wow, I just called Mary and the kids via FaceTime from Paris, and I am amazed that it really works. Is it the future? What next? That looks like me. And that's 2010. So dude. you were hacked. I, we had to really go back. That was 2010. All right, this is one this more is tweet. This is all 2010. <laughs> we had to go back, I'm telling you. At the app, okay, we'll do one more photo. Abercrombie <laughs> and Fitch. That was my first job in retail. Okay, so your first job, now you run one of the world's most <laughs> iconic cute with luxury this. brands. Uh, but it all began at Abercrombie and Fitch. In Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, now we have this in common. I worked retail at Abercrombie and Fitch as well. Uh, so from, from, and obviously it didn't work out so well for me in the fashion I- industry, uh, but, uh, but that began for you the series of steps that have led to this moment. Yes. And now is. you're here on War With Friends. Yeah. You yeah. feel like you made it. What I'm gonna ask is that you'll cut that deck uh, equally into two piles. Okay. Uh, equally into two parts. I mean, just basically... Cut the deck. Giving your... There you go. All right. Do you feel like you did a pretty good job? No, I don't... No. I think there we need some work. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. Do you remember War? It's the first time I've played cards publicly on camera, I think. I'm a little nervous. It's a very, very, very big deal. Okay. All seven people who watch this okay. will uh, will critique your every Let's move. Let's go. Okay, so uh, high card wins. High card wins. If there is a tie, tie. then we do I, D, D Claire... Claire. Upside down, like to where you can see it, okay. war. And okay. then uh, yeah, whoever wins three times, you'll hear a <laughs> and that means that there's been a victor. Okay. And that's the end of the game. Or if your deck's out of cards. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, I want to start at uh, Mile High Stadium because where you were born again, I was born. I was born in Colorado. That's right. And that's where you gave your life to Jesus. Is that yeah, right? I got saved. I got radically saved at a Promise Keepers convention, uh, Mile High Stadium, 1996, with my father. Uh, at the old, now it's in Vesco Field now, right? They it, built a new one? Yes, they built a new one. Yeah. Uh, but Mile High Stadium, it was the Denver Broncos played there. And uh, at the time, I was uh, working in um, fashion, luxury, living in L.A. Had Prada? Armani? Uh, I think Gucci Prada okay. phrase, and um, I um, 
My father and I weren't in the best of places, and uh, I wasn't a believer. What do you mean, not in the best of places? Uh, I moved from Ohio to LA, and uh, we just our relationship wasn't in a very good place, and I didn't speak to him for quite a while. And so you're a Midwest boy. Yeah, yeah. From the Midwest, a little small town, Grove City, Ohio. From a small town now, influencing culture from New York City that literally reaches around the world, Hong Kong and Paris, and da 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 da. da. So that's an interesting thing. So I guess where you're from in that way doesn't really determine what, Abs- what, what can happen. Absolutely not. I think uh, I think it actually helps me um, just know that all things Ooh, are possible. It's a big moment. First okay. war. All right, let's go. I, I D, D Claire war. That's you, my one. That's you. That's very good. Yes. I feel bad. But your father and your parents weren't loving my, my the trajectory. My parents got divorced. My father got remarried. Um, he asked me to go to a promise keeper convention. At the time, I was a bit of a raver kid. Um, and so I had plans to go to a rave that weekend. And uh, at the last minute, I decided I would meet my father and try to reconcile a relationship. Um, and I had What a, drew you to the rave scene? Uh, oh. What about it? Um, I think at the time, this was before, you know, EDM and Burning Man and everything. It was just like, it was a very raw culture that had no boundaries. Um, and so you would end up driving three hours in the desert and you would find 5,000 people, you know, dancing till the sun came up. And there was n- just no rules. And it was almost like a tribe coming together. Um, like uh, if now with the lens of Christendom, like look like they were worshiping. And when the sun came up, you know, it was like, it was something so wild. And I had never really doubted. And what happened when the sun came up? Um, well, I would, you know, the sun came up and uh, the party would kind of end and I would get So what you were looking for, it was... Yeah, I was, uh, I kept on looking for an answer and I would find a group of people, but but my thirst wasn't quenched. And ironically enough, um, when uh, I had this encounter at Promise Keepers in Denver, Colorado, I... I had a really kind of massive divine experience, believe it or not. Uh, I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I, I was standing on the field, July 1996. Sun was setting behind the white horse. Um, I uh, began weeping kind of uncontrollably. I was not a crier, even though my last name is Kreider. Um, and uh, Very I, heard, good, I, I heard a voice uh, whisper to me, like, I'm the answer you've been looking for. Stop. Uh, and I kind of buckled and fell to my knees and, and kind of gave my life over to God at that point and uh, um, and kind of changed my life it changed me forever and that I went be, on this kind of yeah. radical pursuit of him and uh, and uh, I, and, and um, that's kind of where it started for me what I love okay that's a lot what I love so much about it though is it wasn't like okay now I've met Jesus so the fashion passion has to go away because that was a trajectory and a, a love and a natural ability that you fostered that now only got better with Christ. Because here you are now, you're leading one of the, I mean, from growing up in the Midwest to working in Albuquerque, now you're, you're, you're leading Yves Saint Laurent and uh, to think about the impact and influence you're having it didn't mean now that I have Jesus, I gotta go get a job at a Baptist church right. and all of that goes away. Speak to that. I mean, that, well, uh, you know, there there was the because uh, I really think, and I have a passion for people understanding that p- Christians are needed in the hospitals and at John Hopkins yeah. and 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 at every Hollywood. Oh, that's a war. That's a war, baby. That's a three. That was an eight. Oh. I think it's a three. I mean, it's cl- I mean, it close. Well, three look th- These are your cards. Get your readers out. Yeah. <laughs> Burn. Um, I think, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, that, I, that yeah. mentality that says you're on mission yeah. going into the flagship stores yeah, yeah, in yeah. New York City to influence those people just as much as I do as I get up to preach a sermon. And, and that God's got pleasure in both of those things. Yeah. Well, he, he really, I think, takes pleasure in people. But I think what, what helped me was like there was a concern at the very beginning that I would get saved and, and join the team of Paint the Town Beige. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Like talk about paint the town. Beige. You know, just like we're just boring. Oh, you know, I'm saying can't tell. You know, uh, yeah, you know, and where's the Kentucky Fried Chicken? You know, oh. it's just the, and I found even before I really had a relationship paint with the, the Lord. Town beige. You know, it's it's not about painting the town beige. Like he he he. For me, even before I really got to know him, I found him to be so wild and powerful and strong and unabashed and like I found his pursuit of me and us way more real and passionate and tactile and multidimensional than 
beige. Beige. You know what I mean? And, Although uh, Kanye's done well with it. He's, well, it, yeah. he's yeah. turned it nice. It's you know? beige is the new you know, black. Uh, uh, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, that, that, that to do something for Jesus, it can't be inspiring. Right. That Christian music needs to be crappy secular music, but with a Christian fish on the cover. Right. right. This idea of what we should be innovating, because if we have God who breathes out stars in us, this should be the best thing ever. 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 The greatest ideas on earth, the greatest event on earth, the greatest, like we have kind of the answer to life's questions that, that uh, it's all right there. And he's amazing and he's big and he's strong and he, he's actually completely in love with every one of us. And so I kind of went on this love pursuit of him. And uh, he just kind of... And that made you better at what you did, not worse. Yeah, because he... Like, once you kind of get his love inside you, your ability to love other people is so much easier. I, I think it would be challenging at times to give people the love and grace that they kind of need if I didn't have him kind of fueling it inside of me. You know, I think that sometimes how people feel so anxious and the world feels a little thin. It's just, he's really the endless source and spring of life itself. Talk about... Um Work ethic. Now, hustle, drive. What has that meant for you? How has that helped your career arc? I've heard you before talk about, you know, you having a turning point where you really decided, I want to be a CEO one day. I mean, what, what part has that played in? You know, obviously there's the God component, but also there's the man side too. And what, what does that look like well, for you? I, as I mentioned, I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> Right, <laughs> um, and I, 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 you know, I was I was instilled with this kind of like, you wake up early, you show up, you do the very best you can, you're nice to people, you work until the work is done, you don't leave, you don't take breaks, and so like I had a very very kind of down to earth, humble work perspective that helped me a great deal in building my career. Okay. You know, and this whole idea of show up, you know, try to look the very best you can, be nice to everyone, be the first one there and the last one to leave. Um, and uh, and just consistently believing like you're gonna grow, you're gonna move, you know? And like in terms of my career trajectory, I was living in LA. Uh, I was at a fashion show, first one I have, uh, had ever been to. Um, and I saw this guy walk, walked by who was the CEO and I'm like, wow, if he's the CEO, I want to be a CEO, you know, and kind of made a decision to, to, to really want to participate in this industry and make an impact. Um, and have found it to be uh, amazing. It's, 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 I, I love the industry. I love the people. Um, uh, you know, I think at times all industries can feel like the land of misfit toys a little bit, you know, and, and there's this incredible amount of beautiful people who, um, are, are, are looking for answers like anybody else, you know? Come on. Um, I've heard it said that leadership is equal parts poetry and plumbing. You need to inspire like Shakespeare, but you also, plumbing's necessary. The, it, the organization doesn't work if the toilets don't work. So in your role, I'd imagine the passion, the, clear, the creativity, the, the fashion shows, all that, that's plenty of poetry. The lookbook for next season, yeah. blah, blah, blah. What about the poetry side of leadership? The organization, how many employees work under you around the world? I, I think in my region we have now, I think like 375, 400 people. Okay, so there's a lot of plumbing in there. There's a lot of plumbing so, in there. So how, how do you go back and forth between those two? You know, what? what I, you know, I, I'm, I, think, I'm, 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 I think I mentioned this when we spoke before, but I think I'm super big on this concept that you can't give an experience you haven't had, right? right? And I think at times leaders forget that regardless if it's plumbing or poetry, they're giving an experience all the time. Sure. Each human is a little ecosystem. Right? We're all contributing in some way to the environment. Leaders have a greater impact, you know? And so at times when it isn't poetry, but it is plumbing, I'm trying to be really cautious and cognizant of the experience I'm providing, regardless of the content and context of what we're working on. Wow. Even if it's something quite detailed and nitty gritty, I'm trying to do it in a place that it can be something that we can breathe through, laugh, and joy, and, and, and kind of make progress in a way that even some of the financial nitty gritty that we have to work on at times, you can do with a smile and take a lunch break and have a coffee, and, and you can do it with a bit of humanity that like actually makes people enjoy coming to work, man. Wow. Um, so good. And so like, I'm really trying to provide a consistent experience uh, that if they were to give it away, like it would help our business grow. Amazing. Does that make any sense? A hundred percent. Let me ask you this question. Um, is there a version of Brant that you don't want to be? Is there a version of you that you catch yourself being, yourself, yourself being, 
uh, whether at work or uh, at home, and you catch yourself, and whether it's a bad mood or whether it's this, is, what, what, describe the version yeah. of Brent that you don't want to be there. <laughs> a time, on your lowest days, you find yourself becoming. Um, it's twofold. I think that there's one of just like, when you are aware of the experience that you're providing and wanting to give, you're also aware of who's giving it to you, right? And so there are times when you're like a bit dry, like where, you know, I, have, use, this, the, I use this analogy of Up, you know the movie Up? Oh, yeah. A lot, right? And I always think that each person has an inspiration that's like a little balloon over their head, right? And if everyone's balloon's full in the house, what happens to the house? It takes off, right? Yeah. You know, and uh, sometimes you need, just like you need and I need my balloon a little pumped up as well, you know? Um, and sometimes, you know, I, uh, those are the times that, are, that are, you just feel a little dry, you know? Um, and what I, pumps up your balloon? Um, guys like you, you know? Um, friends like Scott. And um, there's three, three boys over there. Off camera. I think oh, we yeah. got a spouse cam, uh, which today has no spouses in it, but it's got some sons uh, and some I've, friends. I have, a, I have a, a beautiful family and beautiful children. Now, your wife... And you, you met when you were 12. 12. She was 12, I was 13. And never varied, always were together? <laughs> um, or was there dips in, in that way? Well, I mean, there's ebbs and flows in that, you know, sure. but I think in terms of filling my balloon, I can look at those kids and be around them. And Your they, kids. And my, my your family, wife, like. Your friends. Yeah, they faith, can fill my community. balloons. community. Yeah, yep. you know, and I think the only other challenge for me at times is sometimes traveling, um, which I do quite a bit, uh, can, Make we've, not a little a lot, bit of, we've not had a lot of wars. Have you noticed that? I know. It's been really dry. It's been really clean. Traveling can be tough. So okay. does that trigger you? What, 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 what sort of things provoke the empty balloon or empty your balloon faster? Yeah, I think it's just distance away from like home base, you know? Okay. Um, just not being around, you know, if I go to Paris for a couple of weeks, like at the end of that trip, I'm excited to come home and get, get some air in my balloon with, with the kids and the family. Balloon. If I worked for you, what's the, what's the one thing I would do that would never get me fired? That would be like you would never get fired for. Uh, you would never get fired. I'm not big on firing people. What was the last? What, okay, I mean, obviously, I'm looking for the opposite of that. Like, what what are the key things that you see in leaders that you're like that is the trait that I want to see more? Uh, number of? one, I need you to I, I need you to show up and be kind to people. Ooh, or it's that. But we're gonna pause it right here. We're okay. gonna do a little right. thing called word association. Okay. This is a mini game. All so right. I'm just gonna show you one word, and you just have some of the all very right, first thing that comes to your mind. Just empty your mind of all thoughts. Ready. Okay. Beauty. <laughs> Scott. Culture. That would be Scott Harrison of Charity Water. Product plug. Culture. Grace. Joy. Not me. Uh, I like it. I like it. This is, this is your word association, not mine. Uh, beginnings. Hope. God. Honor. Real. Joy. Jesus. Um, confusing. Needed. Optimistic. Very good. So you took a step away from social media. I did. And what I was, still have. What was so, yeah. Um, it's, it was an extended step. It's a continual yeah. step to this moment. I, um, I don't know. I felt um, I was too interested in other people's lives, yeah. um, too comparing mine to theirs. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of be present. I have a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. I love it because you and I are friends because of it. Yeah. I hate it because of the way I see it affecting me as well. And so I think there is that bittersweetness, that, that balance and, and, and tension of it. I mean, I, I as, a, as a person, like I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a, promote I'm not I don't need to promote anything or I'm not trying to sell anything like I actually try to be pretty low-key and I don't talk about the brand much I don't talk about much and I just found that like now that I've been off it for a little, a little while I'm, I'm fine but if, if I were needing to have a message or talk about a YouTube channel or do anything else like the vehicle from it is it a force on earth today that you you can't not Utilize, you yeah. know, it's it's just it's too important. It's too valuable. You, you ready know? for this war? I'm ready for this war Okay, I, I D, D Claire. Claire. Oh, buddy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to work you so bad, but you know I think I've, that's one-to-one. -one I've war. had a lot of practice. You have yeah, sorry. I feel like it. All right, so uh, 
marriage. How many years married? Um, 19. 19 years. Uh, in that time, what's the best marriage advice you ever got from anybody? The, the best marriage advice ever got or you ever you. received that you um, think about regularly in the midst of I, conflict I, or you know. have a vision for your marriage Ooh. Um, have a vision who like, told you that uh, a, 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 a friend a, a while ago what were you wearing I don't remember probably a jean jacket and a t-shirt I got you um, I wear that all the time I like uh, it but, a little bit of uniform but, uh, do you have I, a personal uh, uniform kind of some version of this okay yeah Yep. Uh, and which I really enjoy having a, like keeping it really simple. Less thought yeah, of what you're going to do. Super clean. What's the best life hacking uh, thing? Maybe something you do every day, a way you do things, order of things. You have a morning routine. I do. I go. I wake up at four thirty. Four thirty. I go to the gym at five. Let's put that on the screen. Four thirty. Um, and uh, I, I lift weights, with play basketball. That in that order. Lift weights. Play do basketball. you stretch? I should stretch more. Should you stretch? If you stretch, should you stretch before or after you work out? Well, I should stretch both. I don't stretch either. Because there's a lot of divide on the issue. Yeah. Stretching's really important. Really, now it's going away. Now we just all just go to cryo chamber and run around. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I feel like as long as I don't sit still for too long, nothing really hurts. What things, when they shift, do you notice? Like if it's if it's diet, if it's exercise, if it's if it's if it's you know energy. If, if, if those if things I, are out of the way. I, yeah, if I don't have some sort of that routine, like flexing something, running something, I do feel less, that's mine. Oh, yes. Yeah, less, less impactful. Okay. You know, I really do. I, 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 I use this analogy a lot in terms of, you know, cultural fitness, emotional fish, fitness, family fitness, not fitness physically. I think that the analogy of how you get in shape is applicable to so many areas of your life. Speak to that. You know, if but, I want to, card too. if I want to change the culture of my organization, I'm going to work on something little every day. If I want to change the environment of my family, I'm going to work on something every day. That's not like an hour. It's 15 minutes. It's 20 minutes. You do a little bit of exercise. You see your heart rate change. That analogy for me is so applicable in so many different areas. It's just little bits. If we want to work on a really in-depth relationship, we do it consistently. You know, it's just little bits every single day. They make a, a huge impact. Does that make any sense? Oh, absolutely. Where where do you? And what's the you know? What's the seeing the CEO across the room from now to 10 years from now? What's the what's the five year ten? You know, is there a dream? Is there a goal? Is there a audacious, you know, mountain you want to take at this point? You know, I really want, um, I want to raise great kids. Come you on. Know? I really want to raise great kids. I want to have an impact for my family. Um, and uh, I mean, I can talk career-wise about bigger jobs or more money or more stores. So it's a niner, yeah. um, But uh, I just want to make a- That's the right way. I really want to make an impact in What's in that people. quote? The biggest mistake you can make is to find at the end of your life that you won the wrong thing. Yeah. You won at the yeah. wrong yeah. thing. So uh, you as a dad, w watching you around your kids, but being around you and, and listening to you talk about your kids, very inspiring. What has helped you on your parenting arc, on your parenting journey? Journey to metamorphosis, you know, <laughs> you metamorpha size? Metamorpha size. Metamorpha yeah. Metamorph? Yeah. Is that the verb form? Survey says metamorph. Morph. Yep. Morph. What's helped you transform as a parent? Well, I think I'm transforming. I think it's a process that's always going on. But I think, you know, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus talks about the Lord's Prayer. Right? He, he, yeah. he gives the Lord's Prayer. And he calls God Daddy. Right. Right? And everyone's like, no pressure, right? right? Yeah, you know. And I think, okay, we're gonna call this the, 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 the last one. The, but but before that, I want right. to hear. I want to hear this. Um, I really find that the that that my relationship with the Father, um, and His grace and love and kindness and consistency, and the way that He filters love through me um, has helped me become a nice, <coughs> patient, loving dad. You know, I feel like I've gotten a little bit better at being patient. I think the the challenge at times is just phone screen time. Um, but I think is there an amount in the house? Um, yeah, it's all too much. You know, uh, I think. But, but uh, the I, I really too think much, that, and we've all reached it. Yeah. I really think that the, the the as I've grown in my relationship with the father has helped me become a better father. Come on. Um, and uh, I find God to be the kindest person on earth. 
He is warm. He is kind. He's full of grace. Even when, when, you dis, when you know you've done something wrong, he's still like, I got you. Um, and as I mentioned, like, I, I just find that the heart of God as a father um, and his warmth and kindness and gentleness has helped me hopefully be a relatively decent dad. Um, and uh, that is the kind of like vibe I want. You know, I, I really want my relationship with the Lord um, to be something that the kids want. Not yeah. because they need to go to church because I tell them or whatever, just because they want to have a relationship with the one who hung the moon and the stars, bro. You know, bro. On their own. Uh, I'm touched. All right. This is winner take all right here. Oh, yeah. I, I D player four. Oh, my oh. goodness. It, it was such a joy having you on. Love you. We have one last mini game. Oh. Let's and go. Uh, for that, we need protection. So under your table, there's oh. going to be a helmet. Oh. You got to well. suit up. Suit up for battle. We're gonna put this on. Spade I... goes in the front. There we go. This is it. Oh. Okay, now you can't look in the box. <laughs> yeah, I like that you go under the chin. You, you... So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna have our hands together. And uh, on the count of three, we're gonna take a hand and we're gonna reach in and we have to try and, by touch only, guess what's in the box. Uh, will there anything be hurting us? We, I, it could be anything. This is war. This is not peace with friends. Okay. One, two. Three. I don't really do this. What is in here? That's me. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm don't, afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. Oh, it's, it's, oh, there's something moving in there. Wait, I think it tipped over. I think you tipped it over. Oh, I didn't mean to tip it over. There has to be something somewhere. Uh... uh a spider! Really? <laughs> a spider. Oh, it's a fit, but luckily it's not alive. It's a spider. Look, right? it's not real though. Oh. oh! Okay, wait a minute. But there's like worms too, and I think we crushed one of them. Oh, there's green worms. Oh my god, there's real worms. But they're cute. Okay, but I got the sp Do I get I'm, something for getting the spider? Yeah, right? you 100% do. I've never seen turquoise worms. Have you? No, I haven't. Look, Should that's we... not paint the town beige, that's paint, paint the, town the town turquoise. turquoise. That's like Albuquerque. These are from Santa Fe. They're from Santa They're Fe. Fresh. Right there. Thank right. you very much for being on. Appreciate it's an honor, it. Brother. What a great time. All right. All right. You know what? Come see them, guys. Come see the worms. Those are the most beautiful worms I've ever seen. What are they? God, the spider got me, though. I know. I was like, 